Welcome to part one of my second art exchange. This is my little plan. I'm going to use some heavy carvable modelling paste. If I can open it. Now these things are never that easy after they've been shut for a while. But there we are. I'm going to put some on here and some on there. I might use some other ones as well, but for the moment that's what I'm doing. So, we put a bit on here. I'm using heavy carvable modelling paste from Galeria. Or the Galeria range from Windsor and Newton. And I'm walloping it onto here. I like this heavy carvable paste, it's got a nice, I like the texture, it's nice and, well not, I mean it's called heavy, but I wouldn't say it was that heavy, it's just like icing, good quality icing. There we go. I'm now going to do the other corner, using up the excess from that one. Um, to position where I want it. Like that, I think. up with that. Something funny on my corner there. Oh, that's what it is. A little bit of nastiness. It's alright, I'll just clean up later. At least now I know what was in the way. I like to put a fair amount of this stuff on because then I can smooth it out rather like icing, you see, and you don't get such strange shapes on the surface. Well, you do, but not so many. And the other thing about this heavy carvable stuff is it, it doesn't change shape. Once it's a particular shape, it stays like that. Time to add a bit more texture. The other ones have dried and I'm now going to add a bit more. But I don't want to do all of this, I just want to do little bits. So, excuse me moving it so I can get out at it. I'm just going to do a little bit there. And then I'll lift it. Move it over. And do a bit more over there. I want it to exactly meet in the middle. Lovely. That's what I wanted. And that's my new um, rough circles stencil as well, so I'm quite pleased about that. So, uh, pop that over there to dry gently, because I'm going to be doing some sanding afterwards. I'm just going to add a few more to this, 
because I don't want it so square. At the moment, the pattern looks quite square. So, pop that there. Now this one is even squarer, as you can probably tell, if you can see it at all. So it's very square. So, there we go. One there, I think. Yeah, I think that's it. Sort of look at it and sort of think, yeah. That's more diagonal. I prefer diagonals. Don't know why, don't ask me. No idea. Not a clue. Might be some sort of deep seated human biological thingy or just because I'm funny with diagonals. Who knows? Right, this is the next step in my process for this artwork. Whoops. Just want to smooth it down so it doesn't catch on anything. It's not a lot of uh, not a lot of sanding required. Just doing the bits that I added because I did the other bits before. And now the next bit, as soon as I've dusted this off, just use a brush. I wish I had a little hoover actually. That would be lovely. So, now then, spraying some of this. And what have we got? Uh, cherry pot. No, that's no good. Uh, post box red. So I might have a teensy bit of that here and there. Ooh, I like that. Lovely. And some. Ooh, gone everywhere. Pure sunshine. Let's try a bit of pure sunshine. this one lemon zest not a great deal of difference between that and the sunshine one just trying to catch the edges so it is more sort of all encompassing this is for Tanya Barnes so post what trade I want some more of that I really liked the way that sort of I like the way it's sort of splattery. Ooh, love that. Uh, for an art exchange, as I was saying. Now, I'm going to just let that sit there because I want it to soak up as much of that colour as it possibly can. I might do a little dippy dippy. It's because I want things to mix and meld. I don't really want to add any more any water to it. But we've got squeezed orange there. I want a bit more squeezed orange, I think. 
you can't see this, but I've got this black um, bin bag over everything because I don't want my computer screen to go funny. Because it's quite a decent one and I'd like to keep it that way. I always suggest that you cover areas that you want to keep nice. I want a really rich colour so I'm putting quite a bit of this on. There we go. Now I think that's pretty good so I'm going to let that twiggle about and do whatever it wants to do. Oh my god, wash my hands. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Now that's got to uh, dry. Okay, do. Well, now what I've done so far is well, we've seen the different bits that I've shown you, but what I've done that you have. I haven't shown you, is I've sprayed this with a Krolon matte sealer so it's all supposedly not going to move when I do things on stop, on top so I've got more layers to come. Now what I want to do, because this is dulled down as it's dried, I want to correct that by doing this. This is one I did earlier, Blue Peter not me <laughs> and um, all it is is the Dilutions ink sprayed on and then I've used structure gel to go over the top and I put it on and then sort of smoothed it on with my fingers and I also put some large grain gel here uh, I love that surface it's oh it feels so nice so, uh, but it, it brings out the colour. So that's what I'm intending to do. Plus, I've got a new toy. Chroma Crackle. I have wanted to use this stuff for years. Since I first saw Michael Domingue uh, showing how he was doing it with this stuff and his special techniques and all that. But just to be able to use this stuff is what I wanted to try. Because the, the type of crackle you get with Chroma Crackle seems to be so different to the crackle you can get with anything else. It, it's more natural, it's more, it looks more like something you'd see on the back of, I don't know, uh, alligator, lizard, anything like that. Some sort of reptile skin. So that would be fun to play with, so I've got to have a little bit of that. And But I've got to put the structure gel on first, because that way it's protecting the surface from the next layer and you can put um, clear gesso on top of this in order to create a surface with a bit of bite because by putting this on it's so smooth it's going to get rid of most of the bite. I'm just going to dollop some on. I shall sort of smooth it on like this and then come back with um, a finger. Now, last time I did this, I got yellow in here because it was coming off on the knife. I don't seem to be having that problem at the moment. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to put a, a layer of this all over all of this. So I'm going to need a fair bit. And it dries clear. But of course it's, it needs my finger because you can see what's happening with this. It's just scratchy-wacky and it's not going in, it's giving levels. And I want it to be as smooth as possible. So I shall go in with my little fingers and smooth it as much as I possibly can. See, I want to get it in between so I've still got the texture, but also got the protection. I may actually put a bit much on here, but never mind. Oh, look, some of it's lifting. Oh, well. Well, it, a lot of it lifted before on, on this one. So I got an awful lot of yellow all over the place. Well, I hope you can see that. I've had to move the light so that it's not shining directly on it. 
because otherwise it flares out because it's shiny now. <laughs> Fun, isn't it? Now, <sighs> I'm a bit trepidatious about this so I've never used this stuff before. It's Chroma Crackle. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but I can hope. And I've never opened this tube before, so I'm just opening it now. And I'm, eh. <laughs> so I know what I want to happen, but whether it will actually work that way, I have no idea. So, and how you're supposed to put the excess back into the tube, I don't know. I didn't think you were, which is a pity. So, hmm. so I should be scraping it off where I don't want it to go. This is the um, next stage, yet another layer of the art exchange I'm doing with Tanya. There's no seam or anything on these, it's just do whatever strokes you fancy, which is good. Sometimes the strangest things occur to me. And I know I've got stuff outside the area, but I can't help it because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I do hope this works. It's kind of scary when you're trying a new effect. Never done it before in my life. So I don't want it to go over everything, but it is tending to do so. Well, I don't necessarily want it to. <coughs> Get it on just that bit there. Now then, I'm not going to get this back in there, so what I'm going to have to do is do my usual cleaning method, which is putting the stencil on here and scraping, and then we'll see what we've got. Because it may be that that's it, that's all we're going to get. I must have a look, you know. It's not helping. <laughs> right. I'm hoping it's just doing... i just like to show you how absolutely beautifully this is curing. You see all around the edges here it's all crackling like absolute crazy and drying out into this white colour. Oh it's it's fantastic. Look at the lovely crackles there in the clear part. Look at this. And uh, hey, it's doing exactly oh, better than what I wanted. It's lovely. It's going to be really really great when it all dries out. What I've been doing, I've been sitting it over the top of the computer so hopefully that's hoping it dry out because my tail is quite warm. <laughs> Just wanted you to see that. Right, this is another layer on the Art Exchange with Tan. Yeah. Now, I've got to be careful with this because there's only some places it can go. Like there, like there. Probably going to have to lift some of it off when it goes in the wrong place. A 
because I want it to go specifically in between the layer I've already put on, which is looking so nice. I'm so pleased with it. Right, up a pot. Most of this will go back in the pot, of course. I don't think you can put a second layer of this stuff on. Um, not of this stuff, of the stuff underneath, which is chroma crackle. I don't think it works if you put a second layer on top. Highly unlikely. Right. I think that comes up now and I hope, hope, hope it's going to be alright. I think I might do it in between there actually. Just to be I can always scrape it up if it doesn't work. Yeah. Now extremely carefully but hoping like anything that it's alright. Out of the way for the moment and I'll come back and deal with it and see what I'm doing but in the meantime I'm going to clean up. Right, all I've done is gone over it where it was sort of where I didn't want it and just taken those bits off and smoothed off the edge here and there we are. Now this is when it's dry I've dried it a little bit with the heat gun I'll dry it a little bit more maybe but when it's dry a bit later on today I'll go over it with some colours. So we'll see what happens. Okay, bye bye. Well, hello again. Now, this is not quite dry. There's a little patches here that are just starting to dry. Whereas most of the rest of this is dry. There's a little bit there that isn't. These are the most recent bits I've added just here. So they haven't had time to dry yet, but I'm dying to get on with this. So I'm going to go over these pieces here. Now, if you look carefully, this is orange and red. But if you look carefully here, where the cracking has started, and it's really quite... let me move this up. Let me see if I can get that bit there. Can you see what I mean? How it's actually gone a sort of bluish tinge. I love that. It's so nice. I don't really want to lose it, but I wondered if by painting blue over it I could heighten it. But I'm not entirely sure. So, I'm going to have to try it on a bit that isn't too close to this bit in case it doesn't work so I thought I might try it over here but I might leave it and I might not. I, uh, my initial idea was to paint over this but the crackle is so nice the way it is. So lovely. I think I'll leave it and um, I'll do as I was going to do which was paint this with some with blue and some with gold. Now those are the blues. Have I got a gold? Probably got a copper. Usually got a copper. Uh, which one's that? Solid bronze, not even that's copper. <laughs> Dazzling metallics, rich espresso. That's not the colour I want. I've probably just got nothing but pinks and purple, not pinks and purples and blues. Being a purple and blue sort of person, I've got some silver, but, that's not good. but I have got painter's touch rustoleum now that is gold 
and I've got some gold somewhere else, I'm sure I have. But uh, the other option is to go over it with gilder's paste. Definitely got some gold in that. So I think I'll pause this for a minute and go and see if I can find the gold. Okay, I found the um, gold, but it isn't actually gold, it's called bronze, but it looks gold. But I think I might use some of that. I'm definitely going to use some of this sapphire. Because <coughs> that was my plan all along. Let's make sure it's shook. Had a drop. And off we go. Got the smaller one. Need to be able to get precisely where I want to go. I'm going to start well away from the uh, uncured part. So I shall have to do that another time. I do like uh, metallic colours. I don't often get a chance to do them. Here we are, carrying on with the colouring into the home stretch. And all I'm going to do now is let that, that lot dry. There we are. All finished. This is a test for Tanya's piece. I'm going to try this in here. I want this to protect this area without disturbing it. So this is a, a good test for this. Matte medium, okay. Cross your fingers because I really liked this area. It's made it all go dull. You know when, when it crackles and then it dries, it dries white, or as close to white as you can get. But um, to me it hasn't dried white, it's dried with a bit of the colour underneath showing through which is absolutely lovely, I love it. But as you can see, well maybe you can't see, I'll lift it up and let you see. Light. As you can see in this corner now, that has got iridescent medium on it. You can see it shining. And this looks dull. It looks blank compared to this. It looks like there's no cracks in there. There are cracks in there. It's just that it's um, stopped it being white. I'm hoping that the it will dry properly. So we'll see what happens with those bits. And then we'll know what to do. I did um, send an email to the company I bought the stuff off but I've had no reply from them so I'll probably get a reply in a couple of weeks or something if ever. So there we go and I want to get this off you see I want to send it back to, to Tanya as soon as possible because I've I'm done that well apart from a bit of I want to put a bit of gold on here. Not a lot just a bit but I'm ready to do that and once I've done that and once I've got the uh, crackle protected then off it goes. This is my last stage on this. Now I started this last stage I wanted to use rub and buff and gold but I can't find it anywhere. In any case, I don't think it would have worked because I've tried liquid leaf, uh, which is gold, and frankly, it's not the right colour. It's too greeny. It's it's brassy. It's it's not right. It just doesn't work with that. So I got rid of that, and I tried uh, treasure pewter, which is treasure gold in pewter, it's silvery, but. Again, it didn't look right. Not so much because of the colour this time, as because there are slight ridges here 
on the outside of each of these shapes so that the treasure pewter was being picked up by the outside but, but going on the main body very patchily. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go with some of this metallic gold paint and see if that would do it because that's the kind of colour I wanted but I don't want it everywhere I just want little bits of it so I'm going to go over some of the bits where the treasure pewter went and go in with that I'm not going to do another layer of uh, the gold paint on this. I found that when I was heating it that the gold has sort of crackled. Not quite crackled but it's it's gone oh it's like like a, a reptile skin not scaly but like the skin that isn't scaly. It's sort of bubbly and slightly cracked. I think that's lovely. I think that's superb. And here and over here. See it? Ooh, lovely. I think that's gorgeous. So all that is exactly the kind of thing I love. So I will leave that now. There we are. All finished. Happy crafting, Tanya. Bye-bye.